Africa's closing bell, Africa, and of course the biggest news driving markets today is uh, the Lonman issue. South African Police Minister Nati Mtetwa has confirmed that uh, 34 people were killed yesterday in a security crackdown on striking miners at Lonman's Americana Platinum Mine. This as police uh, opened fire on striking miners armed with machetes and sticks. Gold platinum prices leapt as much as $30 an ounce, more than 2% to a day a high, six day high as the extent of the violence became apparent. Now London shares are down around 13%. Uh, that of course uh, since the unrest has started. Joining me now for to unpack what's been taking place and take a look at the entire saga, we're joined by Lo Lone Sharp, Labour Market Analyst at AdCorp, and John Cable from the Benchmark Foundation. Uh, thanks so much, gents, for joining me today. Of course, just looking at that, uh, you know, very somber mood there today, and no doubt. I mean, this the scale of violence at a mine like this, unprecedented, everyone say the sharp for riots. I suppose, Lone, Lo just firstly get your view on what has taken place. Well, uh, I'm an analyst, so I tend to look at it from a helicopter view, and other people will be able to describe better who the personalities are and who the particular unions are and what their issues are. For me, the important question is, is this an isolated event or is this a systematic problem in the labor relations framework, in the platinum sector only, or perhaps uh, generally in the economy? This is not an isolated event. We've had three major events in the platinum sector. We've had major events in the public sector over the last two years. I tend to think that we have a systematic failure in the labor relations framework in South Africa. We've got uh, the CCMA, the labor courts, which are meant to be conciliation and mediation mechanisms. And they have failed uh, in that duty. We're seeing the number of workdays lost due to stressing. We're seeing uh, all sorts of uh, violence and intimidation, uh, which is now the fourth biggest cause of absenteeism uh, in South Africa. So uh, I think this is, a, this is a long time coming. This is a long-term pattern. And what worries me is other sectors... Uh, which have similar conditions to the platinum sector, the other mining and uh, resources sectors, the government sector, uh, also the manufacturing sector. Those sectors have very similar circumstances to what exists in platinum. Bold competition between unions, uh, naked self-interest uh, on the shop floor, um, and so on. Added to this mix, there is the political problem that the government is in a, an alliance with Kasatu and as a result cannot play honest broker. I'm very interested to see what reception the president and minister of uh, uh, police yeah, receive. I mean, I mean, many are saying that, you know, police stepping in too late, that this has been the surface for some time now, John. Uh, I'm not going to put words into your mouth because you've done an extensive st study, 150-page study into the platinum mining district. Firstly, you know, are the conditions that the miners are living under, in, living under and working under partly responsible for the violence that we've seen this week? Yes, very much so. And I think we studied six platinum mining houses and we've studied them since 2006. Um, we've looked at the whole issue of subcontracting and migrant labour has been an uh, essential component of the problem. Um, in the past, mines used to build houses for their workers. Uh, a city like Volcom um, was built by the mining houses, the hospitals, infrastructure, the roads, the clinics, the recreational facilities. None of this really exists in the mining areas. Uh, the mine workers around Londons are, are do the, externalized. Do the London, sorry, do, do the London conditions uh, compare to mines or they worse or better? They're all very, very similar. Um, and this has been a role in action. It started at Impala Platinum. It developed at Aquarius as well. It's against low wages, starvation wages within the industry. Um, number one, they don't compare um, to anything else in the world like Canada or North America. Um, it's, um, it's an issue of, of, of shareholder capitalism, of where all the shares and benefits accrue to a small minority. Um, uh, Nonmans is listed on the London Stock Exchange. Um, it's an act of, of, of complete irresponsibility on the part of the mining houses to do things properly. 
They all claim to be social responsible. They all claim to respect communities and to promote development in communities. Um, but it's very, very hard to see. Um, uh, mines lead to the formation of informal settlements, backyard shacks, um, where people are extremely overcrowding of services, increased pressure on local government, um, and everyone not willing to foot the bill. Yeah, uh, We've got some visuals, in fact, of uh, the AMCU press briefing today where the president um, was very emotional over what has taken place. Uh, and let's just uh, take a look um, at, at those visuals. Of course, we had our um, reporter, Arabile Gumeri, over there. And, uh, you know, one of the things that did come out from this is they said that uh, the police definitely were the first to fire. And uh, they also made some accusations about uh, NUM and, uh, of course, the tensions around the two mine workers. And that has been what has been seen to really spark off this violent protest that we saw earlier on in the week. I don't know if we've got those visuals up and running, um, but we'll, we first, uh, before we take a look at those, we've got Franz Bellini, the General Sec Secretary of the National Union of Mines, joining us on the line to give us, uh, to give us their take on what exactly has taken place this week and where this puts us with regards to 10 trade unions. Uh, Franz, thank you very much for joining us today. Of course, a very somber mood um, across South Africa today and just, you know, with a view of how this is being the image that it's uh, being transported across the world of, of South Africa. Uh, France, can you give us an update in terms of where we stand right now and what exactly led to, to the violence that we saw last week, this week rather? Thanks uh, for having me. I must indicate that this is very regrettable and we once more convey our condolences to all the family members uh, who have lost their lives. We think that this death and violence could have been avoided. We need to indicate that the focus, it is not about two unions. The focus is about the social challenges facing the country and the mine workers uh, in particular. The non-compliance with the mining um, uh, charter in terms of um, improving the life standard of the mining communities, the themselves, in terms of housing and so on. And the third area that we still we have the view that the wages of mine workers um, is far below as compared to their partners uh, um, um, uh, in, in part of the world, except uh, for China. So we think those are fundamentals which need to be addressed. It is for this reason that we have agreed and responded positively to the invitation by the Minister of uh, 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 Mineral and Resources to meet agency tomorrow with all the stakeholders. Having said that, we think that a, 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 an, an investigation must be done to determine exactly who are the players behind this violence, who Fran organized this um, 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 uh, yeah. match up. Franz, yeah. there was a comment um, from Zuelan Zimavavi from Kosatu earlier in this week, conceding that there's a growing disconnect between trade union leaders and their members. And um, perhaps this has been displayed this week where we've had the sense that members are out of control and that union leaders uh, aren't able to, to manage them. Um, what is your response to that? I think the report of uh, Zueli is not related to this incident. It's an, anal an analysis of the entire union movement uh, in South Africa. So, but France, is that true, though, then? Well, I don't think that it's entirely true in other instances. In other instances, uh, that is a fact. In this uh, instance, France? In this instance, I don't think that's a fact. Remember, we have software at every level, we have software at every structure who are servicing these members on a full-time basis. So there could not be have been a loophole in so far as the quality of service uh, is concerned. The problem is that generally, mine workers are indebted and they have the view that what they're earning is, is low and we agree with them. And just as time that there can be a serious leap in looking at the basic flaw of what mine workers are earning today, we'll still have this problem. People will manipulate them and use them as cannon for us. You could see how this violence was planned. The sharp instruments which are there, how bodies were mutilated, it is very, very scary. Franz, please stay on the line. But as I was saying earlier, we had the AMCU press briefing earlier, and these are just some visuals um, that we had from it. Um, and, you know, as I said earlier, the president of AMCU, very emotional over what had taken place. As you can see, um, that's the press briefing over there. So, Franz, I'd just like to find out from you. I mean, the, the sense is that you've been losing members to AMCU, and uh, they've... Uh, and you know, this has been, you've gone on then on a campaign to try and win these members back, and that's why we've had um, this turf war reigniting. 
Uh, where do you stand with regards to membership specifically at London right now? At, at London, we've got, uh, we're a majority union with bargaining rights. We've got 57% uh, of membership uh, in London. So we are a majority union. Recruitment is part of parcel of the lifeblood of any organization. We had to recruit in career one of the London operations because workers were dismissed uh, during an AMCO uh, illegal strike in 2011. So people had to be re reinstated and re-employed without membership. So we had to recruit those members again. Okay, so I mean, of course, it's, it's not, you know, fair to not have AMCO president here to, to um, you know, respond to this next question. But from NUM's perspective, are AMCO inciting violence within their members? Um, we, we want to leave this to an investigation which must be done uh, to determine exactly who are the role players behind this violence. Because this violence was well planned, well executed. Uh, by those who organize uh, these rock drill operators. And we think that a, a solid investigation will confirm to us and the public in general who are the perpetrators of this violence. France, thank you for joining us today. France Bellini, the General Secretary of the NUM. Still with me, Lone Sharp Labour and a market analyst at AdCorp and John Cable from Benchmarks Foundations. Uh, your thoughts on, on what France was saying there? I think he's confusing issues uh, conveniently uh, to uh, d direct attention elsewhere. Uh, it's not really uh, useful to get into a blame game, but uh, it's also not correct to misdiagnose the problem. The problem is not one or one, not one necessarily of poor working conditions. That may well be the case. What we're dealing with here is a significant group of people, up to 5,000 in total, who feel that they are not represented, their grievances are not represented properly by their trade union to management. So for this group of people, uh, there is a question of union relevance, the relevance uh, and being in touch of the representative union on the ground. Something that is affecting the economy generally. So has, has NUM lost touch with the needs of their people and that's why AMCU is winning over members? I mean, that, that is difficult for me to answer, but yeah. what I do know is our chairperson, Bishop Joe Sorker, went up and met with um, the striking workers yesterday afternoon, just before all the killings took place. Um, and his experience was that they were peaceful, that they were wanting management to come and talk to them. I lay but that's the, not the visuals you saw. Uh, they didn't look peaceful with machetes. Yes, and... yes, yes, I know. But often in, in strike situations, workers get up in traditional garb. They try to show some kind of strength, you know. It's part of a culture and a, and a tradition, and you'll see that generally in strikes right from the 80s, and I've seen that I was part of the trade union movement myself. Um, I think the bigger problem is, is that mines are impacting negatively on the communities, on um, that workers don't have proper housing, that they live in backyard formal settlements, they don't have access to water or electricity, they're not benefiting from platinum. Um, and we can talk about the downside in platinum at the moment, but in 2010, I mean, Anglo Platinum alone made 46 billion profit. Um, so it's, and. Um, and what we find is communities, there's a lack of employment in communities, that there's a high reliance on, on migrant labor, and this is overcrowding areas. There's so just pollution. the conditions are not it's conducive the, for the, people to be happy the, workers, and they're not, as France was they're saying, they're not conducive not happy to living. With, they're not conducive to, to living. I mean, the, where does this put this very precarious situation right now? Because the platinum sector overall is in the doldrums. I mean, you know, a huge debt. Okay, doldrums perhaps not quite yet, but very closely moving towards that huge debt. And they're in the situation, many of them, where they're looking to cut costs, which means cutting mm. jobs. I mean, surely with a situation like this, that would be near impossible. Yes. I mean, I think this is the problem, that they don't accrue, you know, profits from one year and carry over for a rainy day like this. And when you rely on a large labor force and then you just retrench, and a year ago, Lonmans fired 9,000 workers for an illegal strike. Um, and I think this way of treating labor relations, saying, well, this is the letter of the law, this is illegal, we're going to fire you, doesn't build good labor relations. This is going okay, to and be, I know this yeah. is where you would like is, to step in. Let's, this is yeah. going to be an ongoing problem 
within all the mines in Rustenburg. This is not only a problem at Longmans, it's a problem at Aquarius, it's a problem at Impala Platinum, it's a problem that, that, that um, crosses all the, all the mines within the Bunjandala district. So you're saying they're able to fire people too easily? Yes, far too easily. And I know that loan on your part, you're saying the, the fact that labor, is, labor laws are so inflexible and you aren't able to fire people easily is a problem. I mean, yeah. how, do you, how do you weigh these two against each other? Look, I mean, this is my interpretation of what's happening. In the background, we've got declining trade union membership. And what that means is rivalry between trade unions. I think it's a total ruse and a misdiagnosis of the problem to talk about working conditions on the ground. I don't the, agree the number, with you. No, I mean, I've got on. to step in here and but, say... But let me say, the, 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 the 5,000 workers, up to 5,000 workers who are affected at the Marikana mine represent 3.8 million rands worth of dues that are being competed over between two rival trade unions. It may well be that working conditions are poor. It may well be that uh, workers are not able to earn a living wage. All of those things may well be true. It doesn't explain the existence of two rival unions. That's what I'm trying to explain. We've got a long-term declining trend in union membership. We've got bald-faced rivalry between unions. We've got saturation of unionization in the mining sector, 81% uh, of workers in mining are unionized. As a result, we've got this uh, situation ripe for turf wars. This is AMCU, and uh, I mean, we've had numerous uh, rival unions emerging in education, in healthcare, in a whole range of industries. I think to talk about working conditions is a bit narrow minded because this is a systemic problem affecting the entire economy. The emergence of rival unions in a vacuum where workers do not feel that their existing unions represent their, uh, their interests properly. Which is sparking you know, the vociferous, violent nature It sparks dissatisfaction the with your existing union. And, and you don't agree with that? It had nothing to do with rivalry between trade unions, the strike at Lonmans. Absolutely nothing. It might, you know, one can argue maybe there's a case that unions are not representing the members properly and effectively. But what happened at okay. Impact? I mean, they said, uh, you know, that came down to turf war between rival essentially, unions. Essentially, it starts out as an issue of workers saying, we are not happy with our employees employment conditions. We are not happy with our wages. You can't blame the unions. If the unions there, you'd have complete anarchy. At least the unions keep some kind of order. Yeah, and I think well, this that is, is a like, great example uh, of order well, they as certainly created by haven't unions. If, kept I'm order saying, this week. Well, I mean, if, this if they is weren't a there, disaster. I think then we would have had mass uprisings uh, around yeah. all but the But it doesn't seem like the crazy. unions have their, their members under control. The, this, this, is not, this is not a union issue. I mean, this is a corporate issue. This issue must be laid at the door of Lonmans. No, uh, Lonmans are yeah. responsible for what has happened. Lonmans took drastic what about action if it's a bit last of both? year. When, Surely when, it's a bit of both. When, Bad when, working when, conditions on the one know. hand and rival unions which are, are using the bad working conditions to entice members and incite yes, this violence. That, that, that might be, that, that, there might be rival unions and that might be, you know, might be true that they're trying to gain membership at the expense of NUM. But this is not what the issue is about and I think we need to have perspective. First of all, I mean we had, we had a strike in Impala Platinum. Three workers got killed, drillers as well. And rock drillers do the hardest work in the mining industry. They're the first ones to be maimed or killed. No. Um, secondly, Aquarius had a, had a strike of rock drillers, and, and three of those rock drillers got killed by the security guards of, of Aquarius, from what I understand. So there's a recurring okay. theme of rock drillers. We, we've got so, the South African no, clip but not, from... No, yeah. but not just a recurring theme of rock drillers, but a recurring theme of brutal reactions by the industry towards labor. And I think this is the big problem. Well, of course, you know, that's where the police and come in. And one, we, yeah, we've, we have a comment from the police commissioner, uh, Piega, today, of course, giving a briefing on what exactly happened yesterday. 34 people dead and 78 injured. Uh, let's just take a look at that clip. People have been arrested for various charges, ranging from public violence, murder, attempted murder, malicious damage to property, armed robbery, illegal gathering, and poss possession of dangerous weapon. A dedicated team of investigators is now responsible for investigation of these dockets. A total of six firearms were retrieved after the confrontation scenes 
as well as numerous dangerous weapons. One of the firearms recovered is confirmed to be belonging to the police official killed by armed protesters on Monday earlier this week. The SAPS has secured the, secured the immediate area. Although tensions remain high at this stage, we are still ensuring that that area remains secured. The crime scene, which covers a vast area, is currently being managed by senior officials from the Independent Police Investigative Directorate. They are supported by an expert team of detectives and forensic experts. The police will give their full cooperation with any investigation into this tragic incident. I do want to say for us as subs, this is no time for blaming. This is no time for finger pointing. It is for a time for us to mourn the sad and dark moment we experience as a country. It is at this time that we wish to make a spirited and passionate attempt to match on and do what we are best called for to the country of South Africa and to keep our nation safe and secure. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It certainly is a very sad day and of course a lot of questions as to who fired the first shot yesterday but looking at those visuals I mean you know very violent and um, ad corp, from an ad corp perspective um, Lone, can you give us a closing statement what you hope uh, emanates out of this disaster? I hope we can uh, revisit the labor relations framework which I think has failed the country. We have the highest level of animosity between employers and employees that we've had in recent history. Uh, we have uh, extraordinary levels of violence to the extent that fears of violence and intimidation are the fourth most pressing factor for absenteeism in the country. Uh, I think we need a, there has to be a political solution to this. It's not an economic or financial solution. I think it's narrow-minded to talk about uh, uh, working conditions for workers. I don't think any of those things is going to help. We've got to look at the conciliation and mediation mechanisms that are supposed to protect workplaces against these sorts of incidents. Uh, the CCMA and the Labor Courts and others, the Labor Appeal Courts, which really play a rubber-stamping role in the conciliation of labor disputes in South Africa need to be revisited altogether. Being very close to what is actually taking place uh, in terms of working conditions and everything and saying that Lonman should step up and take responsibility. We haven't heard much from Lonman, in fact. Uh, what, what would you like to say about this? I mean, I think it's, it's, it's naive to think that this is not an issue of, of wages and working conditions. And if one had to go down to Marikana or to Inkemaleng or, in, or to Luka or Chaneng or any of these villages surrounding the mining houses, you will see a contamination of water, you will see dilapidated shacks, lack of concern for the community. I think that hopefully this is going to be a wake-up call for the mining industry and that the mining industry is going to say, right, we're going to have to do, do a lot more for the communities and for the workers surrounding us. We have to improve the housing. Um, we have to start you know, putting money back um, instead of just taking the platinum off the ground and sending all the profits off to shareholders in London. Well, certainly as a wake-up call for South Africa, a uh, lone sharp labour market analyst at AdCorp and John Cable from Benchmarks Foundation uh, joining me for a very uh, interesting debate here and, of course, conflicting views, but everyone has a very strong view on the situation. And of course, we also have Franz Bellini, the General Secretary of the National Union of Mines, joining us on the line. Unfortunately, Joseph Matundra, the President of the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union, uh, couldn't uh, be with us. It seems that the heat uh, of the day got to him and he wasn't able to join us in the show today, but we hope to get him next week to explain what has taken place from their perspective. But as I said, he was in fact crying today at that press briefing, you know, obviously, uh, you know, saddened by what had taken place uh, yesterday. Let's take a quick break now. Firstly, before we do that, uh, just giving you an update, getting back to the markets, how they traded today. The JSE slipping back on the day. The Aldi down by half a percent to 35,547 points. So Slipping back on this Friday from the new record high that it hit yesterday. After the break, we'll take a look at what took place on the local market today. Don't go away.
If anything that can be presented to us that can bring peace to that, we are welcome. You know our numbers, we know where we sit, where we stay, where we sleep, we'll be welcome assisting. But this is about the government now. We are waiting the call from them. We'll do whatever they call us to do. Thank you. Closing Bell is brought to you by RMB, a leading African.